Well, hello, welcome to this Selling Travel TV presentation. Today we're going to be talking about Estonia, a European country known as one of the three Baltic nations. Estonia may be relatively small, but as we're just about to find out, there is plenty to appeal to visitors. It's best known for its capital Tallinn, which in recent years has established itself as a desirable city break destination. But we will also be looking at what the country has to offer beyond its capital. A country blessed with coastline, numerous islands, forests and countryside. I'm delighted that with us today to reveal many of the reasons why Estonia should be on the wish list of all UK travellers is Agnia Nest, who is B2B marketing manager travel trade marketing for Visit Estonia. Hi Agnia, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Hi Steve, uh, thank you for inviting me. Always happy to talk about Estonia and why it's so wonderful to come, come over. Right, and where are you talking to us from today? Uh, well, I am in my home in Tallinn, actually quite close to the seaside and the weather has been amazing, so not too shabby. <laughs> Oh, well, let's, let's kick things off by briefly you telling us where Estonia is in terms of uh, the current situation with COVID and reopening, firstly, its borders, uh, potentially, and its hotels and attractions. Estonia is, incidentally, as of the day we're talking, May the 11th, uh, designated as an amber country on the UK's traffic light list of countries. But, but, but where, are you, where are you with things? So, uh, yes, um, we have been um, having uh, in the first quarter of the year, of course, the slight rise again for cases, but now they have been declining for, for several weeks now. And in terms of uh, opening the country again, so the outside terraces for the restaurants are open. Uh, people can go to gym, people can go to the, to the office if they need to do it. Uh, schools are reopened, uh, kindergartens, kindergartens and all. So life is uh, slowly moving back to normal. Um, regarding international travel, what I guess uh, Visit Estonia is currently really working on and, and trying to facilitate this as much as possible is the creation of this uh, digital vaccination pass. Uh, Estonian company Guard Time already created the, the prototype that actually you can download yourself. I have it on my phone. It looks like a boarding pass with QR code and it shows already if I have been vaccinated, how many doses I have, etc. So that's created. That should really ease up the, the moving between the countries. What, is still, uh, what they are still working on is how to add the negative test result on there and if you have COVID already also, so that one information is in store on that one place. First step will be reopening borders uh, with our neighbors, of course, uh, Finland and the Baltic bubble, so to say. But uh, being, you know, part of European Union, we of course want it to be the whole the whole thing. If Europe is open, then you can be free to choose where where you're going. And regarding to UK. Um, we are talking to the airlines to restore uh, connections as soon as possible. At the moment, only Air Baltic is flying a couple of times a week to Gatwick Airport. But uh, we are talking with, again, with EasyJet and Ryanair and, uh, and Wizz Air to add flights at the end of the summer to Estonia. Okay, thanks. Well, let's talk Estonia. In general terms, how would you describe the country's appeal? Perhaps explain a little bit about what makes it unique, but also those traits that it shares with its Baltic neighbours, Latvia and Lithuania. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, uh, of course, uh, to the people who have never heard before, it seems like a kind of Eastern European part of the world and maybe a little bit of Russia and maybe something un unclear what it is. But, but with all fairness, I think uh, Estonia has written its own kind of history now, new history and found its own new place in the world, because I think it has the best qualities of all those different eras that were in Estonia prior to now. And also it's a little bit similar to Scandinavia, but not quite. And it's a bit more northern than our Latvian and Lithuanian neighbors. So it's really good mix. I think it's Baltics meet Scandic or I don't know, West meets East, it's, it's, it's really great. And of course, Estonia among the Baltic countries has the biggest coastline to the Baltic Sea. So it had access to the outside world for many centuries and all those good things are here. 
Estonia is also very digital, which makes us uh, really stand out. Uh, and it saves us a lot of time. So all of the, you know, business and bureaucracy basically gone. So we just do our things online and then all the rest we're focusing on keeping our nature alive and culture and all that. So when people eventually come here, they always surprised. Wow, I didn't realize it was that modern or that green or yeah, the medieval town is amazing, but there's so much more than that. So maybe these are the, the main things that stand out. Okay, well, we'll talk about some of those, some of those points you mentioned a little bit later, but let's, let's start with Tallinn, which, uh, as I said, has become a popular and now an established city break for UK travellers. What, what is the mix of things that the city has to offer that makes it so appealing? First of all, of course, Tallinn is very compact. So when you're here, uh, you can, everything you can enjoy here very easily, very laid back, relaxed. You don't have to, you know, plan ahead maybe that much. Everything is within walking distance, or if you want to have a cab, it's very short ride. And so, of course, the heart of charm of Tallinn is still its medieval city. And because it's the most well-preserved in the Northern, you know, Europe, it, it really it truly looks like a fairy tale city. So, so you start with this and you can wander around, you know, the streets forever and never find something you already seen before. But when you want to have your this uh, European city break, modern city vibe, you just step out five minutes outside of the old town and, and there you have it. You have your modern restaurants with amazing food. You have the, this modern architecture. But I think the great thing about Tallinn is that everything has a story. Like every little corner in the city has a story to tell. And that's the most exciting one. Sure. And what about things that you must simply see and visit when you go to Tallinn? Is there one or two things you'd, you'd like to highlight? Yes, uh, for, of course, the, the old town, because it, it just tells you the, the essence of, you know, Tallinn and all, but also those new areas that has been recently refurbished or made available, you know, for people to just enjoy, enjoy and relax. So Noblesner would be the one, it's, uh, it's an old port, but now it has art galleries and, you know, lovely restaurants and all. The other one would be um, probably Kadriorg Palace and Art Museum, because that's already another era which makes Tallinn so, you know, versatile. So that's the uh, Russia and, and Tsar and all this Baroque style, amazing uh, Kadriorg Palace. And the third one would probably be Teleskivi. Uh, it's supposed to be the most well-known hipster place in, in Europe where, where hipsters live, so to say. It's wooden houses and laid back uh, little streets, design shops and all. So these, these would give you the, the fuller picture of why Tallinn is so great to, to have a, spend your time here. That's great. You have, of course, and perhaps, you know, this is not quite so well known, but you have plenty to satisfy those who, 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 who want the great outdoors, uh, that want to spend time among pristine nature. You have, you, have a, you have a long coastline, you have forests, you have natural springs. How can a visitor plan a trip that takes in some of the best of Estonia's natural wonders? Uh, yes, uh, the na nature that we have here actually is uh, really easily accessible and you don't have to be a skillful hiker or, or, I don't know, have some special gear with you to go out in the nature. Tallinn is very green. I think it's one of the, the greenest even in the, whole, in the whole Europe, but also the distances are so short. So even if you're only planning to stay in the capital, you can take one hour ride outside of the city and then already you will find yourself in one of those national parks or bogs and wetland walking trails and you know us you've heard us talk about bogs so many times but they're really special areas uh, that you can spend a little time there and then return to the city and into your great luxury hotel and then you will kind of feel re relaxed i guess the other great place to go if you have more time is of course our islands because island culture is a, and vibe is very different from the city one. It's those fishermen villages, you know, and smoked fish and the stories that they are saying. So islands, Saarama being the biggest one, but also Muhu, we sometimes call it Five Star Island. It's on the way to Saarama. And of course, Hiyuma with all of those amazing lighthouses. Fun fact is that on the island of Hiyuma, there is one 
lighthouse that recently has been proven that it came from the same uh, architectural agency that Eiffel was designing the Eiffel Tower there. Wow. So it's now a proven fact. So we have something very great on our tiny island to, to see. Well, you say we've heard you talk about the bogs, but for those who haven't heard about the bogs, tell us about the bogs and the shoes that you can put on to, to walk across them. Yeah. So bogs are naturally, they're not accessible because it's, it's wetland all, all the way. And if you just step on it, you will sink into that. So you are not able to walk on it. So what we've done around the country, we've actually built wooden trails. Uh, some of them are even wide enough for wheelchair accessibility for the really short stroll. Or if you want to be more extreme and, and try to walking on those mushy grounds, then we have those special box shoes. So you put them on and then you're able to walk and you can do it round, all year round. You can do it in the winter, in the summer. So it's, it's, it's really great half day adventure, I would say, to include to your city itinerary, which is really exciting. And, and the nature in the box, it's different from any forest because the trees are very short. Um, I know the, the, the birds and the, the plants that you see there, they're totally different that you would find in, in a normal forest. And once you get there, you will then realize what I'm talking about. It just seems funny before, but after everyone agrees that it's unique. Okay. I know one of the things that you're, you're keen to, to, to push as a tourist board is, is, the, is your many miles of trails, that the trails for walking and biking, and also your, your, your campsites, many of which are free to visitors. Yeah, yeah. So Estonia is uh, relatively flat, so it's actually a very, very great aspect for the leisure bikers. So you just really, it, it's it's no effort biking, just a lot of beautiful landscape and and again local villages and local cities. We have this really great hiking trail that goes from the north of Estonia all the way down to Latvia across the country. So you can do it by canoe or horseback riding or walking or biking. So that's a really cool place. And on the western part of Estonia, we have a really great bird watching paradise. And I know there is a, as a niche market from UK, the, the bird watching market. And Estonia is great in that aspect because when the birds are migrating, they're stopping over here. So you can spot over 360 species for birds. So those, those nature things, they add up to the full experience that you can have here. And talking about nature and wildlife, uh... You also have, uh, I think I'm right in saying, around 200 wolves in the country and visitors can join a, a nighttime experience where a guide will attempt to communicate with, uh, with the wolves by, by howling. That sounds, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yes it is. Wolves are actually much, uh, much harder to spot with your own eye than, than bears or lynx or any other, you know, wildlife animals. So, so what, what Estonians are created, because Estonians are quirky like that. So if you cannot definitely see the wolf, you can definitely hear, hear him. So, so that's, that's the tours designed for you to do that. And of course, yeah, guides are, are experts in what they're doing and, and you can really hear the howling. And you can howl along. You, you said that Estonia is, is, or you hinted that Estonia's got quite a cool side to it, a, a trendy sort of hipster side, but it also has, I think I'm right in saying, a, a kind of mystical side where looking, looking into some of the things that you can do for this interview, I came across three things that have almost a magical quality to them. I'll, I'll read them out and you can tell me about those and any others that you want to mm -hmm. highlight. Uh, listening to the sounds of the forest while sit, sitting inside a giant megaphone. Riding a white horse to a picnic spot where a meal prepared by a chef using local ingredients is waiting for you and canoeing down the river in my jogi under the glow of torches as i said that sounds that sounds almost mystical is, is that is that a side of estonia that uh, that people people will discover when they visit uh, i believe so uh, you know estonians are, not, are the least religious people in in the whole world so Estonians really believe in the nature and, and they are, that they are one with nature. So they're hugging trees and they get their healing powers from the forest and all that. So I really think that we believe that if we are stressed or tired or whatever, we need the special connection with the nature. So we are going there. 
And regarding food, food is also, you know, has really a long roots. Uh, Estonians are foragers and they, they cook their food and they still do. And they, it's everything is like from forest to the plate and from farm to the table. So we are, we are really keeping in touch with that. And, and those experiences that are created to show the visitors how we are and, and food-wise how amazing it is. And you can actually really easily schedule those experiences that you mentioned. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say that those are the sort of experiences that people are going to be looking for you know, after a year of, of being locked down? I mean, it, it seems like what you described, you, you're well positioned as a country to to appeal for people that just want to reconnect with themselves, with their relatives, with their friends and with nature. I really want to believe that way because uh, we, we say here that everything off the beaten path is only 15 minutes away. And, and I think that now even, maybe even more than before, people really like to, I don't know, have this pure experience and, uh, and something unique, something that they can relate to, maybe. Of course, after this long pandemic lockdown, they want to still see people and talk to them, and they will in Estonia. But also, if they want to, if they want to find themselves again, perhaps, mm. then it would be a really great, great first stop. Okay. And dare I mention your reputation as world champions of wife carrying? What, what, what is what, what is that all about? <laughs> so basically that's a competition where a husband grabs his wife puts her upside down so the legs are crossed right here and they are you know competing who is the the strongest and the fast fastest one <laughs> so i guess the ones winning have the lightest wives <laughs> okay <laughs> just how, how easy once you leave thailand how easy is it to travel around the country is, is, do you need a rental car can you can you rely on buses or, or what are the options it is really easy uh, buses uh, and we are talking really comfortable you know wi-fi on board the plug on board some have screens on board buses uh, estonia is well connected with the bus network but also trains you can uh, go to a second biggest city tartu for example um, Trains are great uh, and car rental is very easy and Estonia has only 1.3 million people so there's no traffic at all and roads are in a really good condition and of course every other person speaks English so if you're even stuck somewhere you will be directed in the right right place so uh, that's very easy. Okay. Uh, late towards the end of last year, you, you launched an agent's uh, training program in association with Travel Uni. Uh, that's a training provider that selling travel has a media partnership with could you tell us about that that training program uh, the content and how else you incentivize agents who uh, want to become an estonia expert yes uh, it was uh, it was our first e-learning uh, ever <laughs> so uh, it was uh, really interesting to partner up with uh, with such a great great team and they really helped us a lot to build the the course so the course is, uh, I would say it's rather general, but it also offers those, um, you know, what makes us different insights there. So it's very easy, easy doing, but I think it, it gives you a, a really good impression of the whole country. When we launched it, we had the competition that we were ruffling um, since we weren't able to, to travel. So we didn't ruffle the opportunity to come and visit and see for themselves but we put together some great gift baskets and it had some delicious things and and some uh, designer things so that people have can have a feel about what Estonia is all all about mm -hmm. but uh, but further now if and when the borders are open we'll try to create again something interesting maybe for agents to to get engaged more and and hopefully then be able to bring them over sure okay and in the meantime, if an agent uh, wants more information on Estonia or perhaps might be looking for some collateral, some posters or some things to pass on to clients, it, 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 who do they contact? They can t contact me, but also if they are joining uh, this e-learning, then we have a special section there. You have sample itineraries and, you know, all the links to the, to the photos. We actually recently purchased a lot of visual material with commercial rights. So meaning you can download it and use it, you know, with a price tag next to it, not only for the brand or image. So yes. And any other questions, just feel free to contact me. 
Okay, thanks. Be happy. Okay, uh, finally, be, be, before, before we wrap up, uh, give us a couple of your own favourite things that you have done in Estonia, a couple of experiences that, you've, that you could pass on to people watching this video and our readers that perhaps have the wow factor and something that a travel agent can pass on to their client that might make that client think, right, I have to go to Estonia. Okay, yeah. So I think the biggest wow factor is that at the moment, everyone who visited and were leaving, they told me that the food and the restaurants were absolutely wow. Because it's a good mixture of having truly great food with history in a setting that you would find in any other amazing great restaurant so the food is really huge here that's going to be the big the biggest wow factor second one probably is that how how unique estonia is because when you're in uk or in any other country you think that oh it's just one of those baltic states but actually it's not and you will only realize it when you visit it and i'm really happy to really happy about it because everybody in the tourism business here in Estonia they work really hard so that the experience is authentic and yes this word authentic I think that's that's the biggest thing what what you see is what you get yeah and you know Estonians are not very maybe smiley or all or those but it's not because they're not friendly it's just because they're very serious and they want to give you the best service so they're very determined but after you talk to them they will smile and then they will become your really good friends. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks, Agda. Thanks for painting such an appealing picture of Estonia. Uh, the idea today was to give agents as many reasons as possible to sell it, and, and you've done just that. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.